and welcome to this ANSYS video course on designing microwave passive components using the ANSYS Electronics Desktop, AEDT for short. And in the previous video, Introduction to Microwave Components, we discussed what is a branch line hybrid coupler. And we designed it in circuit and used the TRL wizard and a component version of the branch line coupler. In this video, we're going to use this model and analyze it in HFSS 3D layout and HFSS MCAT. And we'll also see a cascaded branch line coupler. Now let's simulate this model in HFSS 3D layout design to validate the results. And we can easily export the circuit design into 3D layout design. Go and select the layout editor in the rightmost part of the ribbon. Here you can see the layout of your circuit design. Select all of the objects. Click on the Edit tab on the top of the ribbon area and select Copy to HFSS 3D Layout window. Notice a new HFSS 3D Layout design type is created. Expand the design and in that Properties window you can see the model is copied and pasted along with the variables. In that Layout window you can see the traces of the microstrip lines. Select the traces where the ports will be connected. If you need to, you can elongate these traces double click on one of the port trays and edit the center and the width of this trace as shown. Click OK to accept the changes. And similarly, you can edit the other port traces as well. You can unite these traces if required, selecting all the traces and clicking on the Unite button. Let's go ahead and add a dielectric and ground layer using the Layers window. Click on the Layers window to open the layer stack up and you can edit the name of the top trace you could select copper as the material with a, the required thickness. And to make the model simple, we'll use zero millimeter thickness. And to add the dielectric layer, select the top layer and click on insert below. Enter the name and check to see the dielectric type is selected. And you can also edit the substrate material by clicking on the material. Select FR4 epoxy from that drop down menu. Change the bore thickness to one millimeter. Similarly, add the ground layer in the bottom of the substrate. Good practice to add an air layer on top of the trace layer until you can see the stack up in the right side sub window. Click on apply and close. And in that drop down menu, select the substrate layer and click on draw rectangle. Select the points to draw the rectangle. And you can also select the layers in the layers window, press it to the rightmost side of the interface. Check show dielectrics to show the dielectric layers. And similarly draw the ground and the air layers by following the same approach as the substrate. And here's a 3D view of the stack up. Now let's add ports to the trace. And switch to the edge selection mode by pressing the E key on the keyboard and select that top edge as shown. Right mouse click select port and then create to add the edge port to the model. Similarly, add the other ports. You can access all of these ports in the project manager window under excitations category. And so let's now add a solution setup. In that project manager window, right mouse click on the analysis category and select add HFSS solution setup and click on advanced. A new pop-up window appears and change the frequency to 3.6 gigahertz and under fields check the save fields box and click ok a new window pops up and in this window use interpolation for the sweep type and change the frequency sweep as shown and click ok right mouse click on the setup one and click on validate after successful validation go ahead and analyze the design and after analysis is done let's go ahead and view the results Right mouse click on results and select create standard report rectangular plot and select the following as shown. I click on new report and done to view the results. Here's the S parameter plot. As you can see, there's a little bit of a shift in the resonant frequency from 3.6 gigahertz. Right mouse click on the excitation, select the port excitation. And as you can see, all the ports are excited with one volt and zero phase. Select ports two to four, and for magnitude, enter zero and click on update. And this will change the excitation. Click on OK to change the excitation. And to plot the electric field, right mouse click on the field overlays category. Select the plot fields, E and then MAGI. In the pop-up window, 
check plot on surface and click done. And in the next window, select the substrate layer and click OK. Here's the electric field plot. Let's go ahead and enhance the color of the magnitude plot by using the log scale. Double click on the legend, select the scale tab and choose log and click close to close the dialog box. And you could also animate this. Here's the electric field animation. And you can clearly see that the outputs at port two and three are off by 90 degrees. Here's the modified model along with the dimensions of the traces to make it resonate at 3.6 gigahertz. And here are the S parameter plots for the modified models. Now let's simulate the HFSS 3D layout model geometry using HFSS MCAT. The results will be the same, only the user interface is different. The way you draw those surfaces or volumes is different. And in the project manager window, right mouse click on setup one and go to export and click on the HFSS model. A window pops up and enter a file name and save this MCAD file with a different project name. Now open that saved HFSS MCAD file and go to the desktop tab and click on open. Browse to that saved HFSS project and open it. And here's the HFSS model that we've exported from HFSS 3D layout. In the history tree window, you can see all the objects which are imported into this HFSS MCAD design. And in the project manager window, you can see the model is imported with the boundaries, excitations, and the analysis setup. Right mouse click on the solution setup and select analyze. Once the analysis is done, generate the S parameter results that we have done in the HFSS 3D layout. And you'll notice that the HFSS MCAD results are same as that of the 3D layout ones. Go ahead and modify this model so that we can add SMA connectors available in the form of 3D components in HFSS. In the model tree window, select the air region, the air box and all the lump ports and delete them. And we'll use a relative coordinate system for placing the SMA connector easily. In the draw tab, select offset origin and add the relative coordinate system as port one as shown here. And we have a pre-installed editable ANSYS created SMA connector model in the HFSS library. In the HFSS toolbar, be sure to that view component libraries is selected. And the component library window, which is on your right hand panel, Expand the surface mount devices and drag the SMA underscore RF underscore jack into that 3D modeler window. Let's modify this 3D component model. Select the 3D component in the model tree, right mouse click, component, edit definition. Notice that a project with the component is open. Expand the project and here you can update it to this model as shown on the screen. We've also assigned wave port excitation to this connector as shown. After updating, save the model as a 3D component in a different location other than the system library. And you can also update the fields in the update component window as required and save it. Go back to the branch line coupler model. In that model tree, click on browse 3D component and select the SMA connector which was recently updated and open it. In the pop-up window, select a target coordinate system as the relative CS1 and click OK. Press Ctrl D on the keyboard to fit all the objects in the 3D modeler window. Use the same process as we just did with port one to add SMA connectors on the remaining three ports as shown. Go to the draw tab and click on create region command. In the region window, select pad individual directions and specify the padding offset values for the Y and Z directions as shown and click OK. Validate the design and start the analysis. And once the simulation is complete, view the results. Here's the S parameter plot showing the connectorized model is resonating again near 3.6 gigahertz You'll notice there's a slight difference between the S parameter plots of the connectorized and unconnectorized model. Here is the electric field plots on the surface of the substrate, and you can also animate this field plot for better understanding. Let's go ahead and look at the two section branch line coupler. Here's a two section model with the length and width of each trace as shown. Here's the S parameter plot of the cascaded branch line hybrid. And notice that adding a section broadens the frequency band of interest. We want to do this. 
And here is the electric field plot. In this video, we show how to simulate a branch line quadrature hybrid using the circuit component. We started with an equation-based design using our ANSYS HFSS circuit tool and also simulated the branch line hybrid component. And we then translated it to a HFSS 3D layout model ready for simulation. Then we exported that 3D layout model and automatically generated an HFSS MCAD model. We started with an example problem from a commonly used reference textbook, a single section branch line hybrid, and then we added another section to broaden the frequency range. Thank you for watching this video. And in our next video, we'll show you another textbook example. For more courses on our ANSYS electronic tools or any of our ANSYS simulation tools, please go to ansys.com forward slash courses today.